Today we're going to be looking at the aviation fuel operation. We'll follow the product right from the delivery right to the aircraft wing. We'll look at the different products, Avgas and Jet A1, and all the important quality checks that must be carried out before the actual product is offloaded into the storage. To confirm, we have on specification fuel all the time, every time, which means clear and bright, no water or sediment, and within specification limits. Okay, and moving on, we have a typical Jet A1 fuel truck, and we're going to look around the fuel truck at the different parts of the vehicle. Have to be correctly maintained and serviced. So, bonding reel, bonding reels, 25 homes maximum for continuity of the bonding lead. Correct hoses, we've got 10 years life of the hoses. That includes two years of shelf life. Obviously have to be stored and um, manufactured and installed correctly. We then got the uh, fuel delivery meters that have to be calibrated on a six monthly and 12 monthly period. And DP gauges, inlet, outlet gauges and pressures. And most importantly as well, the dead man handle to ensure that if uh, the operator falls unconscious during the actual fueling operation, the fueling will be shut off. It's operated by depressing the lever. And then every 30 seconds, the operator must release and depress the lever again. P pressures are very important. So the DP gauges must be monitored during the refuel process. For monitor filters, maximum DP is 22 PSI. And for filter water separators, it's 15 PSI. Also, the free movement of the, of the uh, DP gauge must be checked to ensure that we have full travel and movement of the spring and the indicator. Daily drains also have to be carried out on the tank itself to, to remove any water. So we have before and after drain samples. So records for these have to be kept as well. And we also have the Visi jar where the, the fuel samples will be taken should be after a thousand litres have passed into the aircraft or before the first refuel of the day or at each time the actual fuel truck is refilled. Water checks must be carried out during the refuel as well and these are carried out by using shell water detector capsules or an equivalent capsule. Five millilitres of fuel is passed through a syringe and the indicator of the colour of the actual capsules indicates whether the water is present or not. Filter elements and filter vessel checks and installation are very important. So filter monitors every 12 months, filter water separators every three years, and they must also be installed correctly, bolts with the correct torque settings, and inspections and change dates changed at the right times. Another very important safety device is the interlocks to prevent driver ways during the refuel. So it's very important that the interlocks are checked and on each interlock on a daily basis to ensure the truck won't drive away if the hose is still installed. The correct signage on the vehicles is important. For example, the height of the vehicle must be noted at all times. Fire extinguishers are very important for all the trucks and these should be inspected every six months. So the correct checks of each fire extinguisher should be noted on the side Checking the gauges and the overall condition of the fire extinguishers is important. There should be correct product signage on the actual tanks themselves, from the warning labels to no smoking signs and no hazardous product to the environment. These should all be noted. Also, it shows the correct type of fuel being carried within the tanks and within the storage itself. Documentation is a very important part of the process. Checking the truck number matches the documentation. Also, the seals on the outlet valves match the seal numbers on the documents themselves. Dead man operation is very important. The dead man switch should be operated every 30 seconds and the green light will prompt the operator to do this. Overfill protection is very important, particularly when the trucks are being refilled to ensure that the trucks are not overfilled and there is protection if the operator loses consciousness during the operation. Water drains and water checks should be carried out on a daily basis. Buckets will be bonded to the vehicle before the fuel is drained. Checks of the product will be carried out using the Visi jar. 
As you can see here, a vortex is created, and if there is any suspended water or dirt, this will be noted at the bottom of the vortex. Water capsule checks must be carried out at each refill and refuel. Five millilitres of fuel will be passed through the syringe and into the capsule. Agitating the fuel encourages this to happen and for the fuel to pass into the syringe. Once the capsule has five millilitres of fuel, the capsule can be removed and checked. If it is clear and okay, and there are no green or blue specks or indications within the capsule, then the fuel is good to use and there is no water present. The fuel must be returned to the PRT or the product recovery tank. And it is very important that before the product returns back into the system, that the PRT is cleaned and checked before being reused. Support equipment such as additional steps must be maintained and serviced correctly. So checking the hose dates and couplings is very important and the general condition of the equipment. Also documentation and service records are important. So keeping track which tanks and which trucks need servicing should be scheduled and input into the records and the maintenance schedule. These must be kept in a clean and tidy office. Forms should be fully completed as these can be used as a legal document. So it is very important that you take your time to correctly fill in all the sections and all the boxes. Colour metric tests should be carried out on a monthly basis. As you can see here, we have the colour metric charts to show the difference when checked against the product colour. So you'll have a dry paper and a wet paper, which are compared to the results in the charts. Also, every six months, a double colour metric test should be carried out. This will give you a good indication of whether the fuel is clean and bright and within specification. This should be carried out in storage and within the vehicles themselves.